I've been attending conferences for a long time. <laughs> but I think I've never felt quite as richly blessed as during this session. We've had rapid fire messages from a lot of speakers, but everyone hit a very important subject. We've had a smorgasbord today of faith and love and counsel. Let's incorporate it in our lives. Brother Ballard, my dear wife went to the hospital not long ago. She left a note behind for the children. Dear children, do not let daddy touch the microwave. Followed by a comma or the stove <laughs> or the dishwasher or the dryer. I'm embarrassed to add any more to that list. <laughs> I think it was Brother Uchtdorf said you told the audience today about your heritage on your mother's side. What about your father's side? And so I conclude by just a word or two about my father's side. My father's father came from Sweden and his wife from England. They met on the ship coming over. He waited for her to grow up and then he proposed marriage. They were married in the Salt Lake Temple. And he wrote in his journal, Today is the happiest day of my life. My sweetheart and I were married for time and eternity in the Holy Temple. I'm a happy man. Two weeks later, he wrote, The bishop called at our home last night, and I've been called to return to Sweden for two years. My dear wife of 14 days will remain at home to help sustain me. And off he went to Sweden. The most frequent entry in his journal was, my feet are wet. My feet are wet. <laughs> but the most beautiful entry, when I read the journal written in pencil that came to me from an uncle who somehow chose me to receive his father's journal. He said, today we went to the Janssen home in Smedjebakken. We met Sister Janssen, and she had a lovely dinner for us. She is a good cook. Yeah, sure. And then he said, then the children all sang, or played a harmonica, or did a little dance. And then she paid her tithing. Five kroner for the Lord, and one for my companion, Capson, and one for me. And then there was listed the names of the children. When I read that in the journal, there was my wife's father's name as one who was in that household, one who probably sang a song, one who became the father of his only daughter, the girl whom I married. The first day I saw Francis, I knew I'd found the right one. The Lord brought us together later. I went to her home to call on her. She introduced me and her father said, Monson, that's a Swedish name, isn't it? I said, yes. He said, good. Then he went in and brought out a picture from the bureau of two missionaries with their top hats and their book, copies of the Book of Mormon. Are you related to this Monson, he said. Elias Monson. I said, yes, he's my grandfather's brother. He too was a missionary in Sweden. And her father wept. He wept easily. He said, he and his companion were the missionaries who taught the gospel to my mother 
of my father and all of my brothers and sisters and to me. And then he kissed me on the cheek. And then her mother cried. And she kissed me on the other cheek. And then I looked around for Francis. <laughs> and then she said, I'll go get my coat. <laughs> my sweet Francis. had a terrible fall earlier this year. She went to the hospital. She lay in a coma for about 27 days. I sat by her side. She never moved a muscle. The children cried. The grandchildren cried. And I wept. Not a movement. And then one day, she opened her eyes. I set a speed record in getting to her side. And I gave her a kiss and a hug. And I said, you're back. I love you. And she said, I love you too, Tom. But we're in serious trouble. I thought, what do you know about trouble, Francis? <laughs> she said, I forgot to mail in our fourth quarter income tax payment. <laughs> I said to her, Francis, if you had said that before you extended a kiss to me and told me you love me, I might have left you here. <laughs>